Good happy Sunday, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Sunday edition of Politics with Riley King. Let's begin. It's Sunday, February 23rd, 2020. Let's get started. Bloomberg campaign to open Manchester office Monday as part of multi-state bus tour. Voter engagement is focus of three-day tour as Bloomberg ramps up general election efforts in New Hampshire. Democratic Michael Bloomberg's presidential campaign will open in office in Manchester on Monday evening as part of a multi-state bus tour from Pennsylvania to Maine. The campaign said the 5 p.m. office opening will take place at 264 Mammoth Road. It will be the campaign's first office in the state. Bloomberg has been opening field offices throughout the country. Results for 2020 Nevada caucuses. Let's take a listen to that video from WNUR News 9. Create a custom branded email template in seconds with Constant Contacts Template Builder. Bolacakis in a primary are really run differently, so political experts say don't expect to see the same results. And that's kind of what's happening tonight as we see results from Nevada. Right now we have about 27% reporting. The really common denominator between New Hampshire and Nevada is Senator Bernie Sanders. He won here two weeks ago. But Joe Biden, he was in fifth place in the New Hampshire uh, primary. And tonight he's sitting at second, third place. That could either go to Pete Buttigieg or Elizabeth Warren, who was in fourth place here. But the biggest thing to note is Amy Klobuchar, who was in third place here, had this huge win really coming back, but tonight she is currently sitting at six. During a rally in San Antonio, Texas, Saturday night, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders thanked his supporters after his projected win in the Nevada caucus. We won the popular vote in Iowa. We won the New Hampshire primary. And according to three networks in the AP, we have now won the Nevada caucus. It's an expected outcome, says Neil Levesque, executive director at the New Hampshire Institute of Politics at St. Anselm College. I think there's a lot of expectation now that Sanders is not only going to win Nevada, that he's going to do well in many states going forward, and he might be very tough to stop. Hoping to stop Sanders are his Democratic competitors, including Pete Buttigieg. But before we rush to nominate Senator Sanders in our one shot to take on this president, let us take a sober look at what is at stake for our party, for our values, and for those with the most to lose. Seeing an upswing in the caucus is former Vice President Joe Biden, who had a fifth place finish in New Hampshire, but is sitting second in Nevada. I think we're in a position now to move on in a way that we haven't been until this moment. All right, so this race for the nominee is far from over. The South Carolina primary is one week from tonight, and Super Tuesday is March 3rd, with 14 states holding elections. Live in the studio, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Sununu puts distance between himself, Trump, and 2020 election. Governor says he's focusing on issues important to the state. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. The New Hampshire Department of Corrections has immediate openings for corrections officers. Apply today. 
As Governor Chris Sununu preps his re-election bid for a third term, he tells us he's going to point back to the blueprint he's followed since 2016. Focus on the economy, focus on jobs, focus on workforce, focus on wage growth, um, and then at the same time take, as those things surge and provide an opportunity for the state, allow us to make those investments into mental health and opioids and all these systems that had been just waning for years and years and years. We pressed the governor about the pace of that progress in a wide-ranging close-up interview. We also asked him about the race at the top of the ticket in 2020 that could make a big impact down ballot. Should voters view you as a package deal, Sununu and Trump? No, I, I don't. Look, we're New Hampshire, right? And, and again, if people want to know where we stand on anything, it's 603 first. I mean, that really has to be the mentality. And, you know, Donald Trump doesn't define Republicans, just like I don't think Bernie Sanders defines Democrats. Um, everyone has to stand on their own and talk about their issues. What is, what is, how is this election going to impact these families and that neighborhood and this community and that town and that city? Chris Sununu has always been adept at uh, putting that daylight between himself and, and President Trump on issues that he feels uncomfortable with, and then also, of course, support, fully supporting uh, the president on some issues, uh, economic issues, taxes. You can watch the full interview with Governor Chris Sununu and get the Democratic perspective from Senate President Donna Susi right here on Close Up, Sunday at 10 a.m. Live in the studio, Adam Saxton, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video in that report. Michael Bloomberg announces he will release some women from non-disclosure agreement. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. tonight, a reversal from former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg tonight. Bloomberg now says he is releasing some of the women, three women, who signed those non-disclosure agreements. His decision comes after the intense pressure on that debate stage from Elizabeth Warren and others. ABC's Mary Bruce tonight on the women who will now be able to share their story should they choose to do so. Under enormous pressure tonight, an about face from Michael Bloomberg, announcing he will release some women who filed complaints against his company from their confidentiality agreements. Bloomberg has been pummeled over the issue. So, Mr. Mayor, are you willing to release all of those women from those non-disclosure agreements so we can hear their side of the story? We have a very few non-disclosure agreements. Uh, how many Let is me there? finish. How many is there? None of them accuse me of doing anything other than maybe they didn't like the joke I told. And let me just put, and let me put, there's a be agreements between two parties that wanted to keep it quiet, and that's up to them. But several of the women who have signed NDAs with Bloomberg's company told ABC News they are interested in telling their stories, but feared the prospect of retribution. We are not going to beat Donald Trump with a man who has who knows how many non-disclosure agreements and the drip, drip, drip of stories of women saying they have been harassed and discriminated against. That's not what we do as Democrats. It was clear Elizabeth Warren wasn't going to drop it. The senator taunting Bloomberg, drawing up her own contract to release the women from these agreements. All that Mayor Bloomberg has to do is download it. I'll text it. <laughs> sign it, and then the women or men will be free to speak and tell their own stories. With another debate set for Tuesday in South Carolina, today from Bloomberg, an abrupt change in tone. The billionaire saying that after a lot of reflecting, he recognizes non-disclosure agreements promote a culture of silence in the workplace and contribute to a culture of women not feeling safe or supported. He announced his company has identified three NDAs with women to address complaints about comments they said I had made and that those women would now be released from the agreements. Now, Bloomberg isn't even on the ballot here in Nevada. And after the caucus is here tomorrow, all eyes will shift to South Carolina and that next debate. Bloomberg's team is already preparing, and they admit he took a beating in the first debate and say he has to do better. David. All right, Mary Bruce in Nevada for us all week. Mary, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. 
And that is it for this Sunday edition of Politics with Riley King. I hope you all enjoyed this Sunday edition of Politics with Riley King. I'll see you back here next Sunday for another edition of Politics with Riley King. And have a great week ahead of you, everyone. Goodbye, and see you later.